Uh, They're calling you like the king of D and D. It's uh, awesome. I will honorably accept that title, and I won't, <laughs> I won't let you down. <laughs> yeah, you can call me king of D and B, D and B coach. <laughs> D and B coach. Yeah, yeah. Like a romper, I guess a romp him almost. Oh my god, a man, a man romper. A man a romper. romper. Yep, romp him. Ma romp him. All-time favorite would be Super Mario Sunshine. Super Mario <laughs> GameCube. Okay, hey guys, Gina with Sidewalk Talk. Today, I'm with Reaper. What's good? Since this is like a masked interview, we're going to do a something a little bit different. Instead of doing an interview, we're just gonna go straight into Q&A. He's very tall. <laughs> well, how tall are you? Um, I like to joke and say that I'm 6'12". <laughs> That's not quite the case. <laughs> it's like, honestly. <laughs> what made you decide the name Reaper? It was honestly kind of a accumulation of different ideas that represented the music I was making at the time. And um, it was just short and sweet, simple, easy to remember. Like what, like what, what happened, like what situation, were you just like, oh, Reaper, that's it. I think the, that's the winner. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really just a simple answer. I was like eating spaghetti with my manager five <laughs> years ago. <laughs> you were just and, eating spaghetti yep. and just Reaper. And, and he, he was like, mm, yep, Reaper. Yeah, that, uh, that sounds good. That's a, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, you that sounds good. You didn't have any great. other options or anything? Um, not really. There's, I, I like sticking with what works, so. Mm, okay. Did you design the mask yourself? I did not. I had that designed, not designed actually, I found someone that already had previous designs yeah. online, and he's overseas, and I got a few of the masks made. This is so cool. <laughs> How do you know when your music is Someone said food enough to release, but I'm thinking it's good enough to release. Sounds like it should be good. Yeah. <laughs> How do you know when your music is good enough to release? I think there's always a struggle where you think you could work on a song a little bit more. But yeah. there's a period where a song needs to be released. And if it hits the quality criteria for me and hits the emotional connection that I'm trying to make with the listeners, Oh, I got a duck for these trees. <laughs> um, then I think that's when I know it's time to release it. Uh, what dot do you use? FL Studio Gang. FL Studio? Yep. Mm -hmm. So what do you like about FL Studio? Like, why haven't you transitioned to Ableton? So I know Ableton front and back. I've, oh, I've made many wait, songs in Ableton. Did you, did you start at Ableton? I kind of uh, started bilingual, I guess. Oh. Uh, a little bit of everything. Oh, how come? Uh, it was easier to collab with other artists that were in Ableton, uh, so yeah. I had to know Ableton myself. Right. But FL Studio, just the workflow is nice. It's kind of pretty too. Uh huh. I don't know. There's it's just pretty. yeah, it's, it, you get all the colors, you know. And yeah. Ableton's Ableton's like grayscale almost. No, oh, okay. So yeah, it's just it's nice. I just prefer it, and that's what I've been making most of my originals in. I made my last album in FL Studio. What are some simple steps to make D&B? Like recommend MIDI's plugins and such. Hmm. Like your favorite plugin or whatever. You just need a good drum break and then you can use any sounds you want pretty much. You just need a and then yeah. and then, you and just... then you, yeah, literally whatever you want. <laughs> right? Yeah, I use I use a variety of different samples, okay. sounds. Okay. What are your favorite plugins? Favorite plugins. I'm really into Vital and Phase Plant right now. Phase plant. Yeah, phase plant. Oh, phase plant. Yep. Oh, okay. And then uh, I still use serum. Mm -hmm. I'm, once you know serum, I feel like you're not too limited. You can make almost any sound with it. What is the best piece of music production advice you've ever received? Hmm. That's a tough one. It might have honestly came from my manager and he always tells me to go back to my gut feeling because mm. sometimes I get on like version 50 of a project <laughs> and he's like, what did you make the day that you started the song? And I'll go back, I'll open up like version one and I'm like, dang, this is really good because <laughs> it is like, oh, and then wow. I go back, finish version one. So 
I don't know, just sticking to your guns and trusting your gut feeling. I feel like that's been a really useful piece of advice that my manager gave me. Oh, that's awesome. What are your favorite underground D&B producers at the moment? Hmm. It's hard to use the term underground because I feel like I feel like once I listen to them and I know all about them, <laughs> I don't it's consider like, yeah. them underground. <laughs> They're not underground. Yeah, anymore. but so above ground. Yeah, above ground. <laughs> I don't know. I love everything that CLB's doing, Rebel Scum, Justin Hawks, uh, this guy Sota in the UK. Hmm. Who are your favorite artists in general? Like, who do you like? That's so tough. <laughs> Top three. <laughs> Top three? Yeah. Your go-to, like, when it's just like a regular day and you're just like trying to just chill, like in the car, like, what's like your go-to Yeah, this, this is where I feel like I might have like multiple personalities <laughs> because every morning starts off different. Oh. I might start off my morning like drinking coffee and listening to corn. Oh. <laughs> or I might like start my morning listening to Noisia, listening to mm. Annex, oh. Matthews. There's... There's a crazy variety of things. Mm. Hip hop too right now. Mm. I don't know if you've seen my sets recently. I'm, I've been throwing in a bunch of different hip hop acapellas. Mm. So. What is Reaper's dream home? Ooh, dream home. Your dream home. Honestly, I gotta say, I probably need to be somewhere near the water. So either have a pool or be near the beach, near the ocean. And I need a studio that's just a little pan panoramic. I'll take a view of anything, probably forest or mountains. Mm. Yep. Oh. <laughs> this question is really odd. Okay, if hit he, me. If, if he were a hot dog, would he eat himself? That is an odd, odd question. <laughs> um, I do think hot dogs are great and can be made very well, but I don't think I would cannibalize myself. <laughs> Yeah, seriously, who asked this question? <laughs> Will he come back to Grand Rapids if I promise not to violently, but to excitingly and lovingly monopolize the front row and scream the whole time? Of course I'm coming back and do it again. <laughs> do it again, I don't care. That was awesome. What other styles are you into? Um, to be honest, drum and bass has really been just my number one love and passion. So I listen to a lot of drum and bass in halftime. Why do you love D&B so much. It's like what about it? It's something about the feeling of the music. You kind of you get a variety with a single format, a single genre of music, and the inclusivity of the artists and the scene that's been created. It's just incredible. Like Aww. you, it, it's it's really like one of the healthiest and most loving scenes that I've been involved in. Ah. Yep. Wow. Like, when did you first start, when did you first get into, like, D&B, or get introduced to that genre? Let's see, I've been to Respect D&B shows for a while now. I think I really initiated my love for drum and bass through YouTube and Spotify, like, eight oh, years that's ago. How that's how you stumbled upon yep. it or something? Yeah, yeah, going to the gym, and I'd, like, put on a DJ Hazard mix on YouTube, uh -huh. and just be like rocking out in the car, yeah. going nuts. <laughs> Any plans to perform in the UK? Uh, yes, working on that right now. Oh, oh nice. Yep. Have you traveled anywhere else, like outside of the US? Uh, I just did Canada about a month ago. Oh, nice. And oh, I got I got tours in a couple different countries coming up. <gasps> Where, are you allowed to stay? No, not yet. Okay, zip. <laughs> <laughs> when will there be another song like Oblivion? Um, probably pretty soon with the collab work that I'm doing. I don't know, that first EP was definitely more experimental. Mm. I was trying to just like try new things. So, mm. I don't know, I think I'll, I might circle back to that pretty soon. Who are your three biggest inspirations? Saw you at EDC Orlando, you killed it! <laughs> nice, nice. It. Biggest inspirations, let's see. I'd say sonically and just like engineering wise noisia has to be there it is for every drum and bass producer i'm pretty sure yeah. i love what dj hazard and dj zinc did for just the heavier side of breaks and jump up it's really i think hazard in early 2010s era is what really defined some of like the really aggressive jump up sounds for me and uh hmm 
I don't know, top three, it's hard. All, all, the, all the top the top ones are very hard to put together. <laughs> yeah, true. Yep. True. I always found that, I always found that questions, I, everyone asks that question. Like I, five people ask that question. But it's like, it's such a hard question it is. to answer. I think if we, if I consider not only like the music, I'd say Keizo has been an inspiration to me. Mm. He's so talented. He's he's talented. Yeah. He's a joy to be around. Yeah. I really respect him and mm. the way he treats people he works with and the way he treats his fans, it's that's he's definitely amazing. inspirational. I yeah. I like I see so many like videos of Keizo and how he like treats his fans. Amazing. Plus he I, I swear he doesn't get tired. Like he <laughs> I've seen him in the green room where he looks like you know, he's on day four of a touring weekend and he has to play at like 2 a.m. or whatever. He's like totally chill. He's just yeah. chilling, conserving energy, energy, and then he goes out there and he just crushes it. It's, wow. That's definitely inspirational. That's my number three. Mm, aww. What is your all-time favorite video game? Ooh, that's another hard one too. <laughs> Do you play video games often? Um, I actually, since I started, you gotta duck down. <laughs> since I started tour, I haven't been playing as much, mm. but I do still like like Battle Royale games on PC. I don't mm. think it can be my all-time favorite. Maybe my all-time favorite would be Super Mario Sunshine. Super Mario on GameCube? <laughs> or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh exactly. my god, I played that on GameCube! I think it was like the first game that came out on GameCube. Yeah! yeah. It was! I love that game. I love that. Wow. <laughs> I love how that's one of your all-time favorite games video game. Oh yeah, it's got to be. I mean, <laughs> amazing. It's so good. But yeah, I love Battle Royales like PUBG. I love PUBG. I used to play a bunch of Warzone. Mm. Oh, so you like shooters. Yeah. You like shooters. Okay. Do you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert? Extrovert 100%. Really? Uh, I mean, I'm like recharged socially. You can throw me, you throw me in like a room with people. I can see that. And I just like, I won't yeah. go to sleep. I'll just yeah. talk to them. Yeah. I. Totally, I see that. It's so funny. Sometimes my friends will be like, "Yeah, can we go now? Like, I'm, I'm getting tired. Can we? Can You're we like, leave the no, bar? Can we leave the party?" Like, like and I'll, I can be, I can be dead sober, and yeah. I'm just, just, just talking like, to everyone. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. That's, I want to stay. Really sociable, like very, like easy to talk to. <laughs> I'm just like 15 more minutes, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have a? My, did you do the Myers Briggs, like the ENFP, like? Like, do you have that? Um, I haven't done that in a long time, oh, okay. but I'm definitely extroverted. Mm. How do you think you've grown as a person since you first started? Um, I think touring has taught me a lot of patience, oh. and especially with, um, especially with just the travel involved, the organization of everything involved. I think I learned a lot about being more understanding of others as well and just learning what some other artists have to go through on the road. Mm. So <laughs> one thing that I pointed out to one of my buddies was that, you know, sometimes you meet an artist in the green room and it looks like they're in a bad mood or they might just be being an asshole. Yeah. You might assume that. Yeah. But they might have just not slept for three days. Yeah. <laughs> True. Or and they're, they're dehydrated, like, yeah, you know, like. Yeah. You know, I noticed that as well. And a lot of artists are telling me like, they get nervous, so it's like nerves. So they're just like in their head, like prepping for the show or something, or you know. Yeah, I can't totally relate to that because yeah. I don't really get nervous. Yeah, you don't. But um, I do understand now. Yeah. I understand better now. Yeah. Biggest lesson you learned in the music industry? Hmm. I think the biggest lesson I learned was definitely just putting myself first and protecting my creativity and you know what I want to do. And so, you know, taking the step to go out of my way to do, to make content, make music, put out music independently. I think that's been a great lesson. Mm. What do you think is the biggest challenge in, like, with, in the music industry? I or think, like with your project? I think the biggest challenge that I had to overcome was creating something that felt very personal and intimate to people, mm. even though it's like a costumed master project. Yeah. And because there's no point in, you know, creating that connection unless you can be personal on Twitter, create something that people can love. Yeah. So I've, I've done that through Twitter too, just trying to be a normal person, being goofy, being yeah. silly, telling jokes, sharing myself with others. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I was just talking to him earlier today and it was like, 
I thought something totally different with the <laughs> skull mask and everything. And you just like come in, you're just like this bright personality, super friendly. So it was like, it's really, it's really awesome to see that. It's that makes really me happy cool. to hear. Yeah. Piece of advice you'd give your younger self. Hmm. Let's see. What's a good piece of advice? Like you just saw Little Reaper like 10 <laughs> years ago and you're like, yo, what would you say? I would say when you're in a bad mood or like you're sad. Yeah, I'd just say like, don't get caught up dating evil girls in high school. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. That's, that is really, I mean, how many, how many broken, I mean, how many times has your heart been broken? Um, I don't know. My, I don't know if my heart was so broken. I think it's just, I feel like my time was wasted. Evil girls. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. That's good advice. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people would take that right and now. And I think that should be translated to like, spend time taking care of yourself. Yes. And put yourself first in an appropriate amount of, you know, amount of ways. Yeah. Were you popular in school? Um, I guess I would consider myself popular in school. Oh. I don't know. I was... Were you like playing sports and stuff? I did play sports. I was never really considered or concerned with popularity though. I just uh, did my own thing. Yeah. I liked making people laugh. What is the key to happiness? Uh, love. Uh. I think loving yourself, learning to love others. That's... I love that answer. Yeah, it just helps you understand the world better. How often do you stay up past 3 a.m.? <laughs> On tour? Uh, <laughs> just in general, like, just if you had, if you didn't have tour. If I didn't have tour, I would honestly be getting to, I would be going to bed by 11 p.m. <laughs> or like midnight. Ah, okay. I don't know, just for my, just for physical health, I feel like. Yeah. You know how there's like those producers that they'll start working on music at night because like less distractions and stuff? I used to do that and then I kind of swapped, I flipped the script, I started going to bed early mm. and started working early. And ah. So is that your new schedule? Like you work, yeah. you just do, uh, you work on music during the day? Yeah, but it's a little difficult because like I've been touring every weekend since September. Oh! So. I'm, I'm staying up to like 4 a.m. on tour and then I get back home and oh, I got to completely scouting. switch up my rhythm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So like what's your producing schedule like these days? Um, I get up, I write and produce for like four hours in the morning. I have lunch, I call my manager and then I do like administrative work, thinking about brand ideas, thinking about how I want to, you know, share this music with wow. others. Wow. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's like the hardest part, like the business side of things, or does that, does that come pretty easy to you? Um, I think for me, it's definitely, it's definitely more of a challenge, but my manager is, he's so on board with the vision. Like we see eye to eye with almost everything. So You guys can, are like so tight. Yeah, like yeah. You can tell, you're like, like pretty much brothers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. So it, it's the sort of thing where he can help me out. He can, he can pick up any of the slack that I have right there. So I can focus on the music. I can focus on the story. Wow. What did you do to stand out from other artists in the beginning? Um, I really just tried to be making cool music, making interesting music, something that felt familiar, but felt really fresh. Mm. And then beyond that, I wanted to share this, this voice and this personality that made people understand that they don't have to take themselves too seriously. They can be a little vulnerable and just have fun, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's another part of what drum and bass is all about to me. Just Man, you love, <laughs> like, the way you talk about D&B, like, drum and bass, is just, like, you love it. Like, I, I do I love it. I love it. how much you love it. I was, the whole weekend at EDC this past weekend, I was, I was in the GA, right in the smack middle of everything, just cutting shapes, skanking out, dancing my ass off the whole time. Yeah, people are, like, calling you, like, the king of D&B. Right now, like, I, I, how do you feel about it? You're probably like, yeah. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that is this, that is an that absolute cool? honor. That's that, a, yeah. That's an absolute honor, considering that there's been what I consider many kings of DNB, you know, previously. Like, but they're, uh, they're calling you like the king of DNB. It's I, awesome. I will honorably accept that title, and I won't. <laughs> I won't let you down. <laughs> yeah, you can call me king of DNB, DNB coach. DNB coach. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel that you have a healthy relationship with social media? 
I feel nowadays I do. I think in the middle of the pandemic, it was getting pretty toxic, just in general. A, a lot of people had, um, I don't know, just toxic opinions, mm -hmm. sharing a lot of hate, just a lot of hate. It was a lot of complaining. Yes, and, I agree. And I'm, I'm yeah. not talking about political issues. I'm talking about people going out of their way to complain about about personal things that yeah. shouldn't really matter. Cancel culture. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, I feel like uh, during the pandemic, so many people had extra time on their hands at home. And when you have that extra time, maybe you're at home getting bored, getting yeah. extra, extra sour. So mm. I feel like after that, though, coming out of that, I developed a better relationship with social media. I wanted to be, wanted to be in the mix even more. So. What do you consider the ultimate comfort food? Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, it's my favorite. Food so, I love fish. You love fish. I love like sushi. sushi. Love sushi. sushi. I had omakase last night. Wow. And, so um, you're getting that fancy stuff. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I will eat literally anything that comes from a fish. I think last night I had monkfish liver. Um, very wow, interesting. You love fish that much. Yep. And that's I don't know. It's comforting to me because I feel good afterwards. Yeah. But I'd say like. If we're talking like soul food, comfort like, food? Oh, yeah, comfort, like when you're sad, sick, you know? I'd say pho then. Pho! Yeah. I love food. I mean, I'm love a, I'll eat, eat pretty much anything. Mm. I usually do stick to like the fish, chicken, the meats, yeah. but comfort food, pho, those rice noodles, oh. they hit. Wow. What are your hobbies? Do you ha do anything outside of? Besides drum and bass? <laughs> besides <laughs> besides D&B? <laughs> Um, I'd say at this point, hobby's got to be sitting by the pool, sitting in the pool. Oh, you, you love water. <laughs> yeah, You're yeah. Are like a Pisces? Um, I'm not a Pisces, oh, but okay. I will say there's just something comforting about it yeah. and just relaxing. You love water. I, I don't mind the heat either. I'll go anywhere. Or if it's cold, I've been swimming when it's like 28 degrees outside. Oh, wow. Yep. Cool. And there's love something water. comforting about that. I don't know if it's a hobby. But I guess I'm interested in it. It's an interest. <laughs> it's something that you go to when you're just like, you know, just yep. want to chill. Yeah, and then like tequila and bourbon, if that's involved with tequila. the water, yeah, that, that might be even better. <laughs> we should just do, you should just start doing pool parties. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, I feel like that's your, like, Dude, your place. That's a drum and bass vibe too, yeah, right? honestly. Yeah. yeah, and just like, you should just start booking pool parties and that's it. Yeah, the October EDC, last October, that pool party was nuts. Oh, really? I was in my element too. Wow. And everyone's like, you look like you're so hot in your outfit. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm in my element. I'm having a blast. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I'm actually working on like a short sleeve Reaper fit right now. Oh, really? It's kind of like a romper. I guess a romp him almost. Oh my God, a man, a man romper? A man a romper. romper. Yep, romp him. Ma romp him? Yeah. That's what it's actually called, a romp him? I think it's been affectionately nicknamed that. Romp him? It's R-O-M-P. Uh, I thought it was Mamper. Momper. Momper? I don't know. Man, ma romp? I don't know. Instead Actually, of instead Momper of might sound too mom, <laughs> mom, you know. Instead of the the end uh, sound being her, it's him. Uh, so. <laughs> three biggest pet peeves, or just one? What's your biggest pet peeve? Mm, pet peeves. That's tough too. I know I can be uh, bad to communicate with sometimes. Mm. Like it might take me an extra few hours to text back or I need some nudges, you know? Uh, and I get that. I don't know. I feel like I used to be annoyed when people wouldn't communicate back with me, but then I understand now yeah. <laughs> I'm so busy. Like, you I'm get like, it. I'm like, I do the same thing. Yeah. But now ooh, you get it. yeah, that's tough. I don't know now what my pet peeves would be now. Mm. I feel like you're just a happy person. I don't think you even think. I am pretty happy right yeah, now. You're pretty happy. Yeah. yeah. Are you competitive? Very competitive. Mm. What is I, the most comp like what what brings out your competitiveness? I don't know. I feel most? like I f I love talking to people, mm. and I feel like there's a certain threshold of being able to like talk about what you love and you know kind of like n not get to bragging, but being able to share what you do, talk about what you love, and that gets to the point where you're you learn common interests with other people, and then I can go out and like oh. Oh, you play football you want to play touch football and then like you know we go play touch football uh, or or even in the studio like a good healthy amount of competition can help 
artists I work with, like we can push each other, go right. back and forth. Push each other, yeah. And mm. I don't know, I feel like I'm very hungry right now too for what I'm doing. Yeah. And that's just like a part of survival, part of competition. Yeah. What is your biggest fear? Biggest what fear? What is Reaper's biggest mm. fear? What is my biggest fear? I'd say physically, I don't have like too many fears. I think my biggest fear might be being stuck alone in a room somewhere. Like I said, like I'm really extroverted yeah. and if I was alone for more than 48 hours, I think I might go stir crazy. Like, like actually, you know, like alone for too long, I think that might be anxiety inducing yes. for me. Yeah. Did you have any other jobs before your Reaper project? I worked a lot of different jobs to fund this project, but... What was the worst one you had? Am I allowed to mm. ask? Is this like... I don't know. Is this like... Yeah, I, I, I would say this would probably be okay to ask, but... Oh, okay. I don't really know if I had a bad job. Is it? Because, I don't know. The point of working always... <laughs> there, was a, there was a means to an end. In high school, I had a job. And in college, I had a job just so I would have money to take girls out on dates, <laughs> you know, or I'd have money for studio equipment. Yeah. So there's always like a means for the job. Uh -huh. And I think that's why I can say I didn't have any bad jobs. Yeah. So there, if I didn't have any bad ones, I don't think there was a job worse than another. Mm. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Ooh, that's another tough one. That's a crazy one. I think it would be the power to, this sounds so manipulative, but the power to like manipulate people's thoughts. <laughs> this like, sounds so manipulative, <laughs> but to manipulate <laughs> yeah. people's thoughts. Exactly. Yeah. No, this yeah, to, to be able to convince people of anything. That, I don't know. I feel like you'd have, that's total world power right there. That's, uh, that is, that's a great and scary superpower. Yeah. It's, yeah. May, maybe I am a villain. <laughs> I mean, is that my destiny? Oh, maybe. <laughs> I could just like tweet Elon Musk and have him like redesign his whole entire organization. Seriously. Yes. Yeah. Just give me all the money. Yeah. What are the top three goals on your bucket list? Goals on the bucket list. Let's see. Right now. I have a lot of long-term goals, a lot of short-term goals. I don't want to air out too many of them because mm -hmm. I don't know. I think there's a some sort of power in keeping it to yourself. Oh. But I will say, um, definitely a goal of mine to play Rampage Belgium. Do you know the festival out there? No, I don't, but sounds crazy. It's drum and bass and dubstep. It's crazy. Rampage I, in Belgium. Yeah, I, oh. watch, I watch the live streams for the past four years. It's definitely just the environment, everything is involved. I'm sure it's gonna happen one day, but- oh, I'm sure. Definitely a goal of mine. Yeah. And um, I'd say the main goal is just to, teach literally everyone over here in North America how to love drum and bass drum more deeply. Just share that with everyone. Dude, uh, drum and bass. Best piece of advice you've ever received? I think we already did this one, right? No, no, no. well that's music production advice. Okay. But like, in life, general? Like, like life advice. Life advice. Mm -hmm. Like think... if you had like an up and coming producer come up to you and is like, dude, like I'm just struggling with whatever, like, what was, what's the piece of advice that you would give? I would say like take a step back out of the hustle, out of the the rush and the stress and learn to like enjoy the moment. Mm -hmm. Take a freeze frame, a little screenshot oh. of what you're doing right there yeah. and take it all in. Because yeah. on tour recently there's been some stressful stressful runs where the travel's so insane. Mm -hmm. Everything like it almost starts like bubbling up a little bit and then yeah. I just I sit down I'm like man I love what I'm doing. I'm happy to be here. And take a little screenshot, remind yourself of that. Mental screenshot. Wow, you have some, some such wholesome answers. <laughs> Last one. What's next for Reaper? Next for Reaper, I'm actually taking a month off. What I am, do you do? I am going to sit around at the pool. <laughs> do you have a pool? I don't have a pool technically, but oh, I know every you just, pool. You can just crash people's pools. Yeah, there's actually an app like Airbnb where you can rent like someone's pool out of their backyard. What? Yep. I did not know that. I think it's called Swimply. That's how, that's how much you love pools, is that <laughs> you know about this? Yeah, the pool's app. beach, whatever. I'm just gonna have some margaritas. I'm gonna write some music. I, I, love, I love that. You have a, 
great, great life. Yeah, I'll be working on a bunch of collabs this month too. I can finally like lock in into the mm -hmm. studio. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, next show is Project Z, July 3rd? July 3rd, yeah. Wow. Or July 2nd, maybe. I always wanted to go to Project Z. It sounds like very, very fun. I think it's a cool format. It's a one day festival too, so it's. Yeah. You, you don't have to like overcommit. Yeah. And it makes exactly. it more affordable for the sure. fans. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, actually, last one. What do you want to be remembered for? I want to be. Hmm, that's another good one. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely want to be remembered for one of the outstanding forces that made people, you know, fall in love with drum and bass in the United States. <laughs> exactly. Well, Reaper, thank you so much for being on this channel. Thank you. And doing this interview. <laughs> I was so excited when you invited me, actually. Yeah, I... thank you guys for watching. If you like this interview, please <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe. All right, bye, guys. Bye, thank you. <laughs>